Hi everybody, my name is Ben Sampson. I'm really excited to be here. Today, my goal is to really help you understand the underlying drivers of why we give and how activism and companies are driving massive change at scale. I co-founded a company called We Hero, where our team works day in and out with the best companies and nonprofit organizations in the world to create social impact opportunities at scale. Um, for example, we help companies build out CSR or corporate social responsibility strategies or environmental, social, and governance strategies. We also work so closely with nonprofits as well, just to make sure we're supporting the best nonprofits and making sure they can continue making an impact. And this has led us to the journey we're on today where we're working with you know hundreds of these companies and organizations uh, to make this kind of change. Um, and my goal today with you all was to really just pull the curtain back to help you understand a little bit around why we give and why we have such a desire to give back, but also how we're seeing change occur at scale. Um, how we see activism lead to uh, pushing companies to make change and companies then pushing government to enforce regulation. And so we're going to talk a little bit about each one of those components, but to get us started, I really just wanted to share our thoughts around the why. Why do we give and why are employees at companies so concerned about making sure that their company gives? It used to be that you get a job to put food on the table to support your family. Today, the goals people have in their work life, they've changed drastically with this generation. And the big question we get all the time is, what is driving this? Um, and there's a few things that we can consider. Is it our desire to have a healthy, balanced life that's driving this? Um, you know, the National Institutes of Health have found that when people give to charities, it activates regions of the brain associated with pleasure, social connection, trust, and creating that warm glow effect. And I think for any of us that have volunteered or have done donations or have given, um, we have felt this and it feels amazing. And it's a big driver as to why we want to give because we are on the hunt for that good feeling. Uh, the University of California, Berkeley, they did another study that we also find industry, very interesting that they found that elderly people who volunteered for two or more organizations were 44% less likely to die over a five-year period than were non-volunteers, even after controlling for age, exercise habits, general health, and negative health habits like smoking. And so there's some huge health benefits that could definitely be driving this. The other thing that we like to look closely at is the social pressure that our peers place on us and that society places on us. You know that feeling when you turn on the TV and you see a natural disaster, whether it be an earthquake or a tsunami or a wildfire, um, all of a sudden you have this urge to help and do something. And as soon as that natural disaster dissipates, that urge often dissipates with it as well. Um, and it's okay that it goes away. It's totally normal feeling to have. Um, but the social pressure our society puts on us when a natural disaster happens, it's a very normal feeling to have. Um, part of what drives this is that we're just more connected. If we think about this next wave of the workforce and what they're being brought up with, it's a connection to countries and cultures across the globe in real time. And what that le has led to, again, is an understanding as well as an enrichment and access um, to the problems that are happening across this globe. So again, not only are we getting access to other cultures and individuals and governments in real time, we're seeing the challenges and the problems in real time as well. And that is really pushing us in this generation to want to give back in a meaningful way for global causes, not just local causes. The last but not least is we have to remember, we're human from the age of 12 months we will point to objects that an adult pretends to have lost because at that age, we're already trying to help. If we just look at chimpanzees, by contrast, they never point at things for each other. And when they point for people, it seems to be a command to go fetch something rather than to just share information. Modern humans have lived for most of their existence as hunters and gatherers. And so much of human nature has been shaped for survival in really harsh conditions. A number of studies of existing hunter and gatherer peoples. Dr. Kaplan, for example, is very famous for finding evidence of cooperation woven into many levels of human activity. And you know what I like people to take away from this is that we evolved to be nice to each other. Um, we evolved to support each other to survive. In other words, because we just had no other alternative. And as a result, empathy is just an automated response over which we have limited control. Again, I'd like to say that one more time. Empathy is an automated response over which we have limited control. And so again, there's a lot of reasons as to why we give and why we're so driven to give back and volunteer. And these are some things to think about as to why. And the biggest one is just that you're human. You have a desire to give. And it's really important that you fulfill that need and that desire because it's healthy for you. 
And what we're seeing as a result is change occurring at scale because the mechanisms for uh, having change occur at scale are so much greater than ever before. And what I would like to do now is really pull back the curtain again in regards to what's driving the most substantial amounts of change that we see in our eyes. Activist groups are leading and putting the pressure on companies and employees to implement change and then companies are putting the pressure on governments. Let's talk a little bit about this. You know, one of the things that we see is just a golden opportunity is companies as resources for implementing change. Companies can activate employee bases of hundreds of thousands at scale. We have, you know, just for an opportunity, 32.5 million businesses in the US. 30.2 million of those companies are small businesses. Um, we have a population here in the US of 328 million, 123 million people out of that total population are full-time employees in the US alone. And so that's a huge opportunity when we can take that number of people and activate them around causes. It's really exciting to see the impact that we can create. And so the question is, how do you engage those employees and companies to implement change? We talk a lot about the why at conferences like this. We here, when we work with companies, we like talking a lot about the how. Um, and it's really important, again, to note the chain of events here. First and foremost is activism. Activism can be a nonprofit organization, small group of people, um, but they really have an understanding of gaps and challenges in our culture and in society today. And what they do is they try to build awareness around those gaps and those challenges and those problems. And what they do is they oftentimes are putting that pressure on companies. Um, companies oftentimes are the cause of the challenges to start with. And so it's an easy place to go to the companies and also just to activate the employees. Companies, we have to remember, they're just an organization or a structure of people. And so when we can activate the employees and get the people really passionate, the employees then go to the leadership to have that company implement change. And when this comes together, um, it's very, very powerful and we're seeing very strong signs. That's why 55% of consumers are willing to pay extra for products or services from companies that have a dedicated social impact plan. That's why 77% of millennials list their company's commitment to their community as an influence on their decision to work there. And that's why there's 50% lower turnover for companies that engage in socially valuable projects. That doesn't happen by accident. That's by activist groups activating employees, employees becoming very passionate because they just have this burning desire to give as a result of their work today. And that's why we're seeing results like this. And this is important because when companies start implementing this change and they start seeing the success from it, they then pressurize governments to actually provide some form of regulation. And the reason for that is because it provides that very fair competitive playing field. If a company is investing and in pricing their products higher because of social changes they are making, um, they want to make sure a company doesn't come in from underneath them, underprice them, and take some of that market share. And so we see a lot of companies uh, start implementing these, these practices and then ask governments to enforce some form of regulation. So that way it's regulated playing field and then the government's involved. And then we see real change take place because we can see entire industries shift as a result of what we see happening. And so again, just to walk you through the timeline, because I just think it's so important, it starts with activism more often than not. We rarely ever see government lead. Uh, government regulation will always move slower than individuals, employees, and companies. So rarely do we see government regulation come first and then companies and people have to follow after. It's the opposite way around. So we see the activist groups, again, engage with the employees. The employees become very passionate about these causes. Uh, they ask leadership to make changes. Companies get involved and implement these practices just for good business. And as a result, we then see the applied pressure to government regulation as a result. And I think it's just important that you all understand this formula because it is how we're seeing a lot of change today at scale. And it's really exciting to see the results. Um, we have over 90% of the largest companies in the world now, they're filing sustainability reports. 85% of S&P 500 companies are filing these reports and the data is really plentiful for us now. We have more than 80% of mainstream investors as well now considering ESG or environmental, social, and governance information when making investment decisions. And the numbers are compelling. Globally, there are now $22.89 trillion of assets being professionally managed under responsible investment strategies. That's an increase of 25% since 2014, just so you have an understanding of how far we've come. 
And this number is so large, I just like to provide some context. That 22.89 trillion, that exceeds the GDP of the entire US economy. And while all very exciting, we've just scratched the surface. We have a long ways to go. There's a lot more that companies can do. There's a lot more that governments can do to make sure we can still execute social impact change at scale. So what I want you to take away from this is just to understand why we give and why all of us have that urge and desire to support causes that we really care about. It's important for us to have activism around the best causes for companies to then get involved and then the appropriate regulation to be applied where companies can thrive. Again, most of these companies are made up of people just like you and I. And that's why it takes all of us. Thank you all so much for tuning into this. I hope you learned something new. Um, please support the causes that you're passionate about. Thank you again and hope you have a wonderful day.